What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. Are you struggling to write dialogue that feels realistic and emotional? Do you find your characters just coming out and saying everything that they're feeling, which makes your dialogue sound flat and dry and predictable. Or maybe you feel like all your characters sound the same in their dialogue and nobody has a distinct voice or difference in their personality and the way they talk. If you're struggling with any of these things, you clicked on the right video. Today we are going to explore the do's and don'ts of writing dialogue common mistakes that many writers make and how to avoid these mistakes and write dialogue that feels fresh and engaging and will immerse your reader in your story. Dialogue is one of those things that if you get it wrong, it can pull your reader out of the story completely because they start thinking, ah, these characters don't even sound like real people. Nobody would say that. This character wouldn't say that. <laughs> this doesn't feel real. You want to avoid that. You want your dialogue to feel real, like you're just watching real people interact with each other. You want to feel emotionally engaged in what's being said and what's not being said. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. The biggest cringiest mistakes to avoid with dialogue and what to do instead to make your dialogue dynamite. Grab a notebook and let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. Okay, number one mistake to avoid. Don't make your characters say exactly what they're feeling all the time. I also like to call this conflict dumping in dialogue. This is the number one biggest mistake that will instantly make your dialogue feel flat, unengaging, and lacking emotion. Characters who just come right out and say exactly how they're feeling and exactly what they're dealing with as if they are objective observers of themselves. <laughs> Subtext is the golden rule for writing realistic, compelling, amazing dialogue. And subtext can basically be described as showing us what the character is feeling rather than telling us. It's what makes dialogue feel subtle and realistic and mind-blowingly good. Subtext can be tricky to get the hang of because we as the writer can see through the mask that our character is hiding behind. We know what the character is secretly dealing with, but that doesn't mean they're going to reveal what they're secretly dealing with. Remember, everyone filters what they say through their personal beliefs and opinions. This means we often don't say what we want to say. We don't objectively observe events as they are. We interpret events and other people's decisions and then form our own opinions and then decide which opinions we're going to share based on what we hope to achieve by sharing those opinions. And even then, the opinions we share can change very much depending on our current emotional state and the response that we hope to evoke from the other person. In other words, there is a lot to consider with subtext. It's very complex. But let's keep it simple. I'm all about keeping things simple, so I want to show you some real examples of this so you can get a feel for what it looks like, what, what the mistake looks like, and what the solution looks like. So let's say you have two characters, Violet and Kent. Let's say Violet is suspicious that Kent cheated on a test, but he doesn't want to admit it. And I wrote this dialogue in script format, so there are no real dialogue tags. We're gonna add those in later. But first, let's just look at a conversation between these two characters if they were to just come right out and say exactly how they're feeling. Violet, I think you cheated on that test, Kent. Your grades have been terrible lately, and now you have a perfect score. Kent, how dare you say that? I didn't cheat. Violet, then why are you acting so suspicious? I have proof you cheated. I found the paper in your backpack. Kent. Okay, fine. You're right. I cheated. Violet. Why? Kent. Because my father expects me to succeed academically and I didn't want to disappoint him again. I'm tired of always being the family disappointment. I think that's why I felt the need to cheat so that I can measure up to my father's image of success and feel worthy of his love. <laughs> 
it sounds terrible because that's not how real people talk. Is there internal conflict there for the characters? Yes, but it's all on the surface. It's all very obvious because Kent is like just saying exactly what his fatal flaw is and people don't talk like this. People cannot objectively observe themselves and identify their conflicts and childhood traumas and issues and deepest insecurities and misbeliefs about the world. That's why there are a such thing as therapists. So if your character is starting to sound like their own therapist, chances are you need to go back and rewrite this dialogue. Do use subtext to show the character's emotions and beliefs through their dialogue. When you're about to write a line of dialogue that you want to use to show your reader what your character's feeling and struggling with, ask yourself, how can I convey what they're feeling without them coming right out and saying it? Also consider your character's personality and their emotional reaction to what's being said, to what they're being confronted with. Are they the type who withdraws from conflict and becomes incommunicative? Are they prone to angry outbursts when they feel attacked? Or do they laugh and try to charm their way out of an uncomfortable situation? Depending on the nature of your dialogue and what's going on in your story, this will fluctuate a lot, but you have to consider emotional responses and you have to consider the fact that every character's emotional response is going to be different. But start with your character's personality and their beliefs. Start there. What's their personality? What are their beliefs about the world? What is the response that they would have emotionally to this scenario? So let's go back to our dialogue between Violet and Kent and see if we can make it better. I'm going to guess that Kent is a deeply insecure kid, so he puts on this mask of charisma and confidence, and when he feels attacked, he gets really defensive. Maybe he's an Enneagram 3. That could also help me to dig down to the emotional root behind his misbelief. That he needs to perform well academically in order to be worthy of love. Violet. Did you cheat on that test, Kent? Kent, with a forced laugh. What? Are you kidding me? Why would I need to cheat? Violet. I don't know, because your grades have been, well, haltingly, kind of terrible lately. And you heard what Mr. Lang said, nobody has ever gotten a perfect score on that test. Kent flashes her a convincing smile. Well, I guess there's a first time for everything. Violet steps closer, lowering her voice so nobody else hears. Kent, I found the paper in your backpack. Kent, surprised and a little defensive. What were you doing snooping through my backpack? Violet. I needed an eraser. I wasn't snooping. Kent turns away, a muscle ticking in his jaw. He's been caught and he knows there is no getting out of it. Violet. I'm not going to tell your dad if that's what you're afraid of. Kent, defensively. I'm not afraid of him. I'm sick of him. I'm sick of watching him congratulate my brothers on everything they do, telling them how proud he is of them, and meanwhile I just... He shakes his head, frustrated and ashamed of himself. You don't know what it's like, Violet, so just keep your nose out of it, okay? As you can see, the emotional tone of this scene is now a lot different, but it feels more natural for Kent to deny the accusation, then get defensive, and then say something that reveals a little bit about his internal conflict without coming right out and stating what his fatal flaw is. We fully understand from this dialogue that he doesn't feel like he measures up and that he feels like his father isn't proud of him and he needs to cheat in order to achieve something. It's what Kent doesn't say, the subtext, that makes us realize something's happening below the surface here. Number two big mistake of dialogue. Don't make all your characters sound the same. This is especially true and glaringly bad when characters all speak with perfect grammar. Most people do not use perfect grammar when they speak. We all have very different vocabularies depending on where we live, where we grew up, who we grew up around, what we do for a living, where we hang out, who we hang out with. Take all these things into account when you are creating a voice for your character. Maybe some characters will speak with better grammar and punctuation and sound more academically perfect than other characters. Maybe you have a character who's like a 50-year-old English professor. He's gonna sound a lot different than a 16-year-old high school kid. This is one of those things that really sticks out to me when I'm reading and it's cringeworthy because it's like, 
I can't believe that these are real people. It's just hard for me to imagine them saying the things they're saying. They can't sell those lines. They don't sound like individual people. They all sound like the author trying to sound like a good writer. Do give your characters distinct voices and different perspectives. What makes your character unique from every other character in the story? How old are they? How has their community that they've grown up in influenced the way that they think and speak and see the world around them? Even if these differences are subtle, make sure you are showing these differences through their dialogue. Before we continue on to mistake number three, I first want to quickly interrupt myself to tell you guys about a super special live training that I'm going to be hosting this weekend, diving even deeper into the topic of dialogue. If you want to take your dialogue to the next level and learn my seven tried and true techniques for writing dynamite dialogue, you don't want to miss this special live training happening this Sunday. In this live training, we're going to dive deeper into dialogue. I'm going to share with you the life-changing techniques and methods that have helped me to take my dialogue to the next level and make it addictive, compelling, realistic, and emotional. In this training, you will learn how to effortlessly weave your character's motivations and fears into their dialogue. My secret hack for keeping character voice consistent throughout a story how to strip down wordy dialogue tags for the most powerful prose, my super simple trick for making all your dialogue sound natural and realistic, how to make every line of dialogue matter to the heart of your story, and my favorite way to step into the shoes of your character and sound like them without even trying. This training is every valuable lesson I have ever learned about dialogue packed into a super valuable teaching that I guarantee you will take boring dialogue and turn it into dynamite, turn it into something that will keep your reader up past their bedtime turning pages. This training is happening this Sunday, October 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope to see you there. You can click the link below to save your spot. And if you can't make it to the live stream, don't worry, you will be able to watch the replay as many times as you want. No exaggeration, these techniques have literally changed my writing. They've changed my life. And I'm going to share things on this live training that I have never shared anywhere else. So click the link below to save your spot. And I hope to see you there this Sunday. Okay, let's continue with the mistakes. Number three. Don't overuse description in dialogue tags. This one's specific to novel writers or anybody writing with prose. If you're a screenwriter, you won't be encountering this, but if you're writing dialogue tags, you want to avoid too much description. Description can slow the pacing way down in a way that makes your story put down a ball. What happens is we start skipping tags altogether. I do this all the time when I'm reading and I, <laughs> I encounter a scene that has way too many dialogue tags, way too much description between the conversation. I will just literally start skipping that part. Just skip to the good stuff. You probably do this too without even realizing you're doing it <laughs> because the way our brain works is we are here for the conversation, right? We're hearing this conversation happening in our minds. We're seeing it happen like a movie. And when the pacing gets slowed down, our brain is like skipping to the need to know information. Okay, where are the important parts? Where's the good stuff? Let me show you an example of what I mean. Let's go back to our scene of Violet and Kent talking to each other and let's add in some dialogue tags. Way too many of them. Violet narrowed her eyes, regarding Kent with suspicion for a long moment. Did you cheat on that test, Kent? He responded with a laugh that sounded somewhat forced. What? Are you kidding me? Why would I need to cheat? Violet didn't know how to begin, how to say it in a way that wouldn't hurt his feelings or make him defensive. I don't know, because your grades have been... Well, she trailed off, her voice halting and quiet. She didn't want to have this conversation, but there was no avoiding it now. Your grades have been kind of terrible lately, and you heard what Mr. Lang said. Nobody has ever gotten a perfect score on that test. Kent flashed her one of his classic, unruffled smiles. The smile he gave everyone, with a side of flattery and easy charm. Well, I guess there's a first time for everything. Violet stepped closer lowering her voice to a hushed murmur so nobody else could hear. Kent, I found the paper in your backpack. 
Kent turned to face her, a spark of defensiveness flickering in his eyes. The look was equal parts surprise and guilt. What were you doing snooping through my backpack? He growled. Every muscle in his body wound tight. I needed an eraser, Violet explained, nervously picking at her fingernail. I wasn't snooping. Kent turned away, a muscle ticking in his jaw. But Violet wouldn't back down from this conversation, and she made that clear by the way she stood her ground, waiting for an explanation. When a long silence passed between them, and it became obvious that Kent wasn't going to explain, Violet spoke again. I'm not going to tell your dad, she said gently, if that's what you're afraid of. I'm not afraid of him, Kent fired back, his voice hardening. I'm sick of him. I'm sick of watching him congratulate my brothers on everything they do, telling them how proud he is of them, and meanwhile, I just... He shook his head, and Violet could see an unmistakable glint of frustration and remorse holding court in his eyes. You don't know what it's like, Violet, so just keep your nose out of it, okay? Talk about slowing down the dialogue. <laughs> if that was an actual scene in a book I was reading, you better believe I would be skipping through most of those dialogue tags to get to the good stuff. But Abby, what about all the nuances of emotion? All the body language? We can still have all those things without editorializing every single moment for the reader. We can still show them the emotion of the scene with a little bit of body language without telling them every single time someone bats an eyelash or picks at their fingernails. Do keep your dialogue fast paced and to the point. Remember my golden rule of pacing. You see everything happening at the pace at which you read. Which means if you want your reader to see this scene happening in their mind like a movie, it's going to be difficult for them to watch that if you're slowing us down so much with all these unnecessary descriptions in the dialogue tags. Your reader is gonna feel like they're watching it in slow motion. So let's take that same scene and try stripping it down to the most powerful, punchy dialogue tags. Violet narrowed her eyes. Did you cheat on that test, Kent? His laugh came out sounding forced. What? Are you kidding me? Why would I need to cheat? I don't know, because your grades have been, well, kind of terrible lately. And you heard what Mr. Lang said, nobody has ever gotten a perfect score on that test. Kent flashed her an unruffled smile. Well, I guess there's a first time for everything. Kent, Violet stepped closer, lowering her voice so nobody else could hear. I found the paper in your backpack. He whirled to face her. What were you doing snooping through my backpack? I needed an eraser, I wasn't snooping. Kent turned away a muscle ticking in his jaw. I'm not going to tell your dad if that's what you're afraid of. I'm not afraid of him, Kent fired back. I'm sick of him. I'm sick of watching him congratulate my brothers on everything they do, telling them how proud he is of them, and meanwhile, I just... He shook his head, an unmistakable glint of frustration and regret clashing in his eyes. You don't know what it's like, Violet. So just keep your nose out of it, okay? Much better, much shorter, but see how we still have the emotions in the body language and the subtlety, the undertones, without slowing down the scene. I invite you to practice this with your own writing. Take a scene with dialogue that's a little bit too wordy, maybe a little bit too descriptive, and see if you can strip it down to be just as punchy, but twice as fast. In some cases, a line of description might be able to come out completely and doesn't even change the tone of the scene. But remember, practice makes perfect. The more you practice writing dialogue and rewriting dialogue, the better you'll get. So boom, those are the top three biggest mistakes, cringeworthy things to avoid when writing dialogue. If you want to take your dialogue to that next level, you don't wanna miss my live training happening this Sunday, where I'm going to share my seven best tried and true techniques for writing dynamite dialogue. These are things I use every single day in my writing. They have saved my life many times and I can't wait to share them with you. That training is happening on Sunday, October 5th first at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope to see you there. If you can't make it to the live stream, don't worry, you can still watch the replay as many times as you want. And when you sign up to Patreon to join this live training, you also unlock my entire archive of previous live trainings, which is over 15 hours of in-depth, value-packed, 
teaching on writing and publishing. So click the link below this video, save your spot at the live training, get access to all those other previous live trainings, and I can't wait to see you this Sunday when we will dive even deeper into the topic of dialogue. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Shh.